So Tommy Mel, aka the Joe, uh, the the Shane Falco of of college quarterbacks, comes in. The, the, I'm sorry, I'm getting out of here. All right, Shane, we need you to win these games. <laughs> What is up, everybody? It is Jake with Master of Football. Back at it again. Happy Friday. Thank you so much for being here. If you've never been here before, this is Jake with Master of Football. Pro football, college football, video game football, anything related to American football, we discuss in the show right now. Please subscribe. Please hit that red subscribe button. Like, share, comment, subscribe, do all that stuff. Drives engagement. I really appreciate it. Without further ado, let's get into the video. All right, so this is Master of Football. All things pro football, college football, video game football. So, college football, there's several different leagues. This is just the FBS. Now, we know that Georgia and Alabama are going to be having their rematch this coming Monday, but tomorrow, okay, I'm filming this on Thursday, posted on Friday, on Saturday, tomorrow, is going to be the FCS National Championship, the best teams from the, I believe, 70 scholarships division. So, let's see what's going on with the bracket right now and get caught up to that. Let's go. So, here we are on NCAA.com slash bracket slash football slash FCS 2021. So, we see down here, so check it out. So, uh, in the first round, we have a couple, uh, you know, games here. Uh, Stephen of Austin and Carnot Word, UT Martin, Missouri State. Uh, we got Holy Cross. We got South Dakota State. We got Southeast Louisiana. I think my face is actually covering that up. We got uh, Eastern Washington with the with the Inferno Turf, baby. Uh, what else we got? We got Davidson. Uh, what's up? What's up, Steph Curry? Uh, we got South Dakota, Southern Illinois. But we see all the way down here to the championship. So here we are with the national championship game on 1-8. 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time. Number eight seed Montana State versus number two seed North Dakota State. So this game is actually very near and dear to my heart, okay? My brother graduated from Montana. My mom went to Montana State. A lot of my cousins went to Montana State. Even with North Dakota, I never really went there, but every time they were playing Iowa, Iowa State, I always cheered for them. But uh, my dad was born in North Dakota, has good ties to North Dakota. Anytime they're on, he watches. He's like, yeah, you go, go to the home team. So North Dakota State versus Montana State National Championship. I'm going to talk more about Montana State because they're the exception here. North Dakota State is the perennial power. Okay, they are the Alabama of the FCS ranks, whereas the Montana State Bobcats are not. This is the first time they've been in the championship in, since 1984. So let's check and see uh, an article I have right here that articulates what to look out for in the game. I'm going to post that right now. So here we are with AthlonSports.com, FCS National Championship Prediction and Preview, Montana State versus North Dakota State. Ryan McLaughlin, he actually breaks it down pretty good here. Talks about how North Dakota State, there is not a lot to be surprised about. Okay, they have multiple offensive linemen, waves of offensive linemen. They run the ball right at you. There's no mystery. They're coming at you. you got to be able to stop it. Also, number eight in the country in the FCS ranks in efficiency of passing. So efficient with passing, obviously, probably because every time they run play action, everybody sucks up and they throw it over the top. So uh, not a lot of mystery there. North Dakota State is going to be, they're actually favored in this game. I actually have them favored myself. But looking over at the Montana State side, there are several interesting things here. I actually want to talk to you about a game first that bred this run to the national championship because this is an absolute Cinderella story. So here's the game right here. Montana State versus Montana. So this is a huge rivalry. Um, and unfortunately, the Montana State Bobcats had a rough go in this one. So you come down here and check it out. That Matthew McKay, quarterback, 12 for 25, 108, 4.3 yards per attempt. This is not very good at one touchdown. Uh, Cameron Humphrey had two picks, but at the same time, 10 yards per attempt. Uh, or, yeah, 10 yards per attempt. A 220, one touchdown. They were also able to uh, you know, just move the ball a lot more efficiently than the Montana State Bobcats. I think a big telling number down here. There wasn't a lot of stats in this game to go over. I mean, there was one fumble loss by the punter. But the really big thing here is you can just see the fact that Montana punted the ball three times and Montana State punted it nine times. You just It's one of those situations where you just can't punt the ball so many times in a row. You have to move the ball somewhat on offense. And they ultimately weren't able to do that. Montana wins 29-10. to 10. Here's the crazy part. So this is a couple days after this game. This is a couple days before the playoff game. Okay, so December 4th, they had a playoff game. So you see here it says Matthew McKay, starting quarterback, enters the transfer portal. Come down here and check him out. Montana State starting quarterback Matthew McKay has entered the transfer portal, announced Tuesday, Thursday on Twitter. So he says, I'm thankful to Montana State. Brr, brr, brr. So it says the news comes two days before Montana State's face uh, FCS playoff game against UT Martin at Bobcat Stadium. MCU's uh, confirmed Mc, uh, McKay's transfer but did not comment further mckay at richard jr who will, be, who will be a graduate transfer did not respond to requests so where does that put them at because if you come back here and check this out 
you check out this, the so right here, they, the first game they have, they played UT Martin, they won, and then they played Sam Houston State, the number one seed in the playoffs, and then they won big. And then you come in here and checked out the fact that they played South Dakota State, and then they won big two. So how the hell are they doing this right now? This little baby face guy right here. This is absolutely nuts. So, um, and again, a lot of people might think, oh, dude, this is FCS. This doesn't matter, dude. I'm telling you right now, these teams can beat FBS teams. And But the surprising fact right here is the fact that Tommy Mallott, Mellett, I don't know how to say his name, but uh, the starter decided to leave two days before a playoff game. He comes in, true freshman quarterback from Butte, Montana, cute little Butte, Montana. I grew up in Great Falls. He grew up in Butte. Uh, and he's coming, and he has absolutely led them to a, uh, you know, a, a national championship. They're doing great right now. So if you look at the games right here, so you check these games out here. New team are in 26 to, to 7. Uh, Sam Houston, 42 to 19. And then South Dakota State, 31. They had the rare home away home uh, in the playoffs. But you see the fact that, man, they, there's this team. They just got hot. And they've got several things here. This has got a lot of dynamic, uh, you know, connections between these two franchises. Excuse me, between these two colleges. I also think the fact that I'm going to bring up their uh, their head coach for Montana, Brenton Vigan or Brenton Vigin, whatever the hell you say his name, is actually a North Dakota State coach. Excuse me, I should say a former coach. Come over here, Brent Vigin, and again, I'm sorry if I'm jacking that name up, but you come down here, playing career, North Dakota State. You come down here, uh, graduate transfer, North Dakota State, 1998, all the way up until 2013. Goes to Wyoming for two years as a offensive coordinator, QB coach, then two more years or three more years as a assistant head coach, offensive coordinator, quarterback coach. Finally goes to Montana State first year, and remember he's got quarterback leaves. You just got the crap kicked out of you by a rival, and you got two days before your your game uh, your game against uh, FCS playoff opponent, and your quarterback leaves, and you got to put a freshman in there. They've been putting it together, man. They've been doing pretty good. I also think a big aspect of that is Troy Anderson. So Troy Anderson, a lot of people think, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, you might be awesome in the FCS, bro, but you're probably you're not pro, uh, pro material. You're not pro material. Uh, apparently, Troy Anderson is. So Troy Anderson, 6'4", 235 from Dillon, Montana. If you've never been to Dillon, Montana, don't uh, mind because <laughs> it's really small. Um, it's flat. It's in it's encased in all these mountains, or it's kind of it's kind of far away from the mountains. Excuse me. But you come down here and check this out. That uh, he is absolutely a terror. Several dudes in here. Um, if you come down here, I think it's Jim Nagy is going to say the fact that nobody in this year's draft class has a more impressive and unique college resume than MSU uh, Bobcats multi-position projection Troy Anderson. Some teams see him as an athletic off-the-ball flow linebacker, and other think he's a cool, uh, could be a cool Taysom Hill type player on offense. So I personally think the fact that that you're seeing these, I don't want to say positionless positions, but almost like super hybrids, safety linebacker hybrids, things like that. This look, that's, looks like what he could be, but, uh, man, he's just, they've got some talent. They can run the ball. They run the ball really well. Tommy Mellett, you know, he's, he's, the, he's the Cinderella story. We'll see how it goes. So Tommy Mellett, a.k.a. the, Joe, uh, the, the Shane Falco of, of college quarterbacks, comes in. The, the, I'm sorry, I'm getting out of here. All right, Shane, we need you to win these games. So Tommy Mellett, man, he comes in, and they're doing really well. Now, that being said, right now, they, the North Dakota State uh, Bison are favored to win that game. I am projected to win that game. I wouldn't mind seeing Montana State win it. You know, like I said, mom's an alum, everything like that. But uh, let's be honest here. I'm pretty sure that it's going to be North Dakota State reigning supreme again. All right, guys, let me know. Are you guys going to check out the FCS National Championship? I know I'm going to watch it. Hopefully it stays a good game. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Cinderella Story versus Juggernaut. Man, it's, it's a dynamic game for us to watch on a Saturday just because most of the college football games are over. And uh, most of the NFL football games, there's a couple that are good. Um, but I'm really looking forward to this game because hey, it's got close implications to my family. All right, guys, that's it. I will see you guys on Monday. I am out.